My name is Sue. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. Formerly owned Sweet Pea Gardens. I was a corporate climber before that. I'm a mother of a great daughter, wife of a great husband, dog lover, and always a creator. Now at almost 60, I created Let's Chat and Cook a Chicken to help you live a more delicious and easier life and tackle some tough subjects together to help us all get unstuck and live a, a delicious, joyful life. Join me as I share my love of cooking, painting, gardening, shelling, hiking. Gardening provides many metaphors in life. The planting of seeds in spring for me has always been inspiring, motivating, symbolizing the beginning of new life, always motivates and brings me optimism. Plant your seeds in life, water them, feed them, love them, nurture them, and just watch how they grow and blossom. Be it your seeds in a relationship, goals at work, your health, whatever those seeds and ideas are, just plant them and take care of them. Hi all, it's cold and rainy here in Maine. The end of March, I guess, what do you expect? But it's cheery in the house. I keep it cheery. I cut my forsythia as you saw in my last video. We're gonna make bread today. Did you just hear that? Oh, oh my God. Look at this beauty. Look, can you see the bubbles? Oh my God. I, I've never done this technique before. I made a Levant. They call, I just had to look up how to say L-E-V-A-I-N, Levant for sourdough, the starter. I had to look it up and I took French for seven years and I still didn't know if I pronounced the N or not. Levant, Levant, Levant. Just say it with authority. That's how my um, uh, gardening teacher used to say. She goes, if you don't know a botanical term, just say it like clematis, even though it might be clematis or anyway. Levant, the, the absolutely gorgeous. So you, the first step, this dough is a two day, two day step. I'm making from the perfect loaf, this beautiful, um, it's a, made all with spelt, whole grain maple spelt. Oh, it's a pan loaf. Doesn't it look beautiful like Canadian brown bread? Uh, imagine on uh, with egg salad. And because I love spelt so much, I always use spelt uh, in my sourdough, about 50 grams, usually just a little bit, because it adds a nutty, soft texture to the bread. This bread is all spelt, 100%. I will see. Uh, I, I have enough to make one loaf with this. Uh, and this is from Maine Grains. I love Maine Grains here in Maine. Uh, organic spelt flour. So. This is what I really wanted to show you. That's what all this babbling on. I really just wanted to turn the camera on and show you this gorgeous, what I made last night. And when I just hit it with my hand, you heard it go pop. I thought the top, I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought the top probably blew off of this and <laughs> made a mess, but it did not. And uh, we're gonna do it together. We're gonna, I'm gonna stand back because I have a feeling it's just, it's so alive and bubbly. It's just gonna shoot off. Oh, oh, I'm wrong. When I hit it, I think it released. Look at that, let me get my hand. This is what we're gonna work with, how gorgeous. Oh, could you see? It's so beautiful. I love this. It's got beautiful structure. So that's what's going to go into our dough right now. Uh, and I'm gonna take you around and show you that. The other thing, new thing I'm doing with bread. Today's a good day to be inside learning new things. So I'll turn the water off. I'm heating up the water because it's cold. Our house is like, I keep it at 60. So bread should be more like 72 to 76 to 78, like ambient, ambient there's another word, ambient, ambient temperature. Um, but it's cold here. So I have to adjust the dough temperature in general with the water I'm using. I'm gonna make it a lot warmer than people would do. And that, that's what I wanna talk about. So the other thing I learned about, not just the Levon, the desired dough temperature, DDT. He talks all about it in this um, book and how to, if you're not a math person, you may not love this. I happen to love math, uh, page 138. He's got this whole, um, how to calculate mixing water temperature. 
you have to take <laughs> to get the mixing water temperature you have to take four temperatures the flower temperature the levon temperature the ambient temperature of the room and friction factor <laughs> i don't know what is friction factor he's got it all explained i'm learning today just a quick so we don't go it gets a little boring kitchen temperature all these different kitchen temperatures he tells you then what temperature you need to make your mixing water with my temperature is not even 64 the lowest he goes is 64 i just bumped up my thermometer just for the fact of the bread uh frugal fanny here i like to keep it at 60 or below i'm going to use 64 we're going to pretend our kitchen is 64 i have to get the te water temperature to 106 degrees to mix into my dough so that I get a DDT, desired dough temperature of 78. So here we go. That was a long winded, but you know, there's a lot to bread, it really is. And not to scare you off, there's a lot to bread, but they're really, it's easy. Uh, we're, you see, if I can do it, you can do it. So back to the water temperature, I'm gonna get the water temperature up and we're gonna start mixing our dough right here. And actually, because it says I have to knead the dough for five minutes, he says by hand. Well, I've got my handy KitchenAid that Maggie gave me. I'm going to be using that to do the kneading. Because <laughs> i got to work out after this. I, I can't use up all my strength kneading dough for five minutes. <laughs> Let's see what we mean. I know I need the hot water. And you know what? Uh, you're going to have to take the temperature of the water. Yeah, we're going to be fine. A hundred and something, that's fine. So let's, let's let this sit here. More math. 940 divided by 2 is uh, 470 grams. 470. So mix the dough. DDT, the large roll, add the flour. The water, okay. So first, I like to add the water first. Okay. 732 divided by two, oh my God, is, uh, seven, that's uh, 366, oh God. I was right. So I need, because um, I'm doing half of half the recipe because I don't have enough spelt. So half is 470 of flour and 366 grams of water. And then what else? The sea salt is easy, 20 grams. So that's 10 grams of salt. And the Levon is, um, Levon, two, two, two. So that's going to be one, one, one for the grams. And that's it. Oh, and maple syrup, 86 grams of maple syrup. So that would be 43 grams done. five minutes I am learning it didn't seem to have enough look at how wet it is but I gave it another minute on the machine I did this in the KitchenAid because this is a wet dough wetter than I usually do you saw what we added we added a lot of water and we added all that maple syrup and so it's much wetter but there is a structure you see so when it was kneading around in the KitchenAid I could see the structure even though it does look loose 
it, I could see the structure of the gluten and I could see it clinging to the bowl. So that's a sign that we're ready. I'm gonna put it back in the bowl we mixed in, but I warmed up the bowl too. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> As you see, it's wet. I don't know if you can see it. My arm's probably in the way, but there's a structure and it looks nice. And it's a wetter dough that I'm used to working with, but it's gonna be a very hydrated, beautiful dough. Let's get all that, all that in there. You know what? <laughs> ay, 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 ay. I am a mess. You know, let's get down the proper tools. <laughs> what does it do with my left back? Forget it. I'm just, I'm a righty. Let's get all of this dough out. I don't want to. I don't want to miss any. Just get my nice dough scraper. Scrape it all out. Is that worth it? I don't know. Sometimes I am ridiculous. So now there's our nice, beautiful dough. It smells nice too. Our Pullman pan. That's what it's called. We're gonna we're gonna proof it in that after, but first we're going to let this sit and do bulk fermentation. So we're going to cover it. And it's now we're back to making kind of like a regular sourdough. We're going to do bulk fermentation, I think four stretch and folds. Every 30 minutes we're going to do four sets of stretch and folds. So over the next couple of hours we'll do the stretch and fold. So I will see you back here in 30 minutes. I'm going to let it rest and then I'm going to do my first stretch and fold. Things are looking good in the main kitchen today. <laughs> Do you know what? I want to say something too while it's on my mind because uh, we are, let's chat and cook a chicken. We're not all about just cooking, but cooking is vital to living <laughs> and nurturing others. Uh, and it's fun. The bread adds a rhythm to my life, a, a discipline, a rhythm, uh, something that I do every week that I sort of depend on like an old friend. Usually, is today Friday? Yeah, today's Friday. I always do it on Friday usually. I do my bread so that coming into the weekend we have lovely fresh bread. So that's my rhythm. At the end of the week I know I'm going to be mixing up doughs and baking and the house is going to smell nice or I can give them to friends. But that's just one of the things, that's one of the positive aspects of cooking at home and is that it sort of grounds you and it keeps me sane just like my running does. It keeps away the crazies in a way uh, because you, you know, you have it, life gets so busy and you have a tendency to get pulled in so many directions that it's nice to have a rhythm. It's nice to have something that you can depend on that you, you've learned how to do that you're confident in. It makes you feel good. Um, and then you get to eat it. So that, you know, it's a plus, 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 a win, win, win. W's across the board, honestly. Um, so, and it's something that I can keep learning. Just like gardening and art, it's like, it's never ending. You're never gonna end finishing, knowing everything there is about cooking or painting or gardening. You just won't. So it, it's always learning, always reaching for something new, learning something new, stretching stretch and fold. There's a lot of an analogies here I could go into, but I won't. Um, find things in your life that bring you joy, that you can give to others, that bring them joy, that kind of tie you together, that add a rhythm to your life that you like. Uh, they just add such sort of richness and joy to your life. I guess that's what I want to say. Find those areas of things that bring you joy every single week or a little thing every single day. Um, and they don't have to be big. They really don't. But this brings me joy and rhythm and uh, balance in a way. So, oh my God. I, I, I'm warming the dough in my, um, you know, with the, the pilot, uh, not the pilot light, the, the um, oven light is on and I'm gonna keep my dough warm there in between stretch and folds, but I forgot the DDT. I forgot to take the temperature after all that math lesson. Let's see, moment of truth. It's supposed to be 78, I think. Oh, look, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77. And it's slowing down too, which is good. 77, 78, ambient. 
Uh, you know, it's going a little higher, which is interesting. I think because the friction factor, it heated up the dough because I used the, um, the KitchenAid instead of my hand. Because you, you imagine the friction is creating heat, which is making a higher temperature. So that's why I'm a little over. I'm at 80.4. Look at nice structure. Perfect. Look, that was a nice learning moment. The DDT, the friction factor, the the Levon, the um, the um, yeah, te I, Today's been a good day. I, I hope. Um, and that book, uh, The Perfect Loaf, uh, you should really uh, take a read. It's a beautiful book, and it really breaks down um, rather complicated kind of topics really easily, a nice layout. Um, ah, I'm happy. Okay, back into the... It's got 30 minutes until I do my first stretch and fold, so I, I leave it in the um, oven off just with the light on. first stretch and fold after letting it sit and proof for 30 minutes and did you notice I'm pleasantly surprised um, it had already uh, settled and wasn't as loose and you saw when I did the stretch and folds yes it is looser than a regular sourdough but it once I even did the first set around was uh, already pulling off of the bowl and feeling like a dough was forming nicely and I probably should have only done one set of stretch and folds. I did like four because I'm extra. And I like to feel that dough come together a little quicker. Um, patience is a virtue, Suey. <laughs> I have a lot to learn still. We all do. You know, why are we here on Earth? Learn lessons. See what I mean about the rhythm of your week, of your life, and fitting the bread into that rhythm? Um, I, I just finished my workout. I did an hour, which is two stretch and folds. So that actually helps me remember what stretch and fold I'm on. I did one before the workout, then the workout was an hour, so that's two. So this is my fourth stretch and fold coming up. So we've done four every 30 minutes. Oh my God, I'm so sweaty. <laughs> we've done four every 30 minutes. And now after this final stretch and fold, we're gonna cover it, keep it in a warm place, and let it continue to go through the bulk fermentation, but not touching it for one hour, and then I'll be back. Here we go, fourth and final. I'm so sweaty. Good sweaty. Um, my hand, you know what I'm gonna do? There's the bell. Okay. And I can see it's um, a lot more aerated and, and puffy. It's And the, the air bubbles, I don't know if you can see that, but there's nice big air bubbles on top. So it's doing what it needs to do. And look at how beautiful that is. I'm just gonna do one more nice long. It's almost passing the window pane test. I can see through, oh, not quite. The final, um, the final bulk fermentation is sitting out for an hour in a warm spot is going to create probably the window pane test will pass, but see you in an hour. Um, it's been four stretch and folds, and then it sat for an hour covered in a warm spot to finish the bulk fermentation and it's said in the instructions it's supposed to be slightly domed and then go down on the sides and have bubbles on top which it does have bubbles it has risen but i i left it in i put it in another extra 15 minutes because i didn't feel like it had that dome enough and i still don't it, but it's got that nice see how when you do that it kind of springs back that's a good sign <sighs> i'm going to give it another like five or ten minutes just to get a little more rise on it but we are that we are very close to being able to start the pre-shaping and then the shaping to go in the Pullman pan. Okay, let's see. I gave it an extra, 
of more than 15 minutes. And you know what? It does look better. There's more bubbles. It's risen more. I wouldn't say it's really domed. I know you can't see it, but it, it has, has like this much of a dome. Teeny, teeny. But because of time, I want to get this done and I know it's going to be fine. So what we're going to do, watch out, Olive Boy. I wet my hands a bit because it's it's sweat. No flour on the surface. We don't want to get flour in the dough at this point. Okay. I'm going to wet this too. I'm going to just... Oh, it's nice and airy. It's very... I, I'm sorry. I know. It's very kind of... All right, let's just roll it out because it's... It's a beauty. It's alive and it's in good, good shape. As Peggy would call it, this is a blobby. <laughs> that is a blobby if I've ever seen one. So with wet hands, it's gonna be hard to work with. Uh, we're going to do what we always do. We're gonna shape it. Better? Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Keep going. Persevere. It gets easier. Just that first pull is sticky. Yeah, I know. I'm not the most graceful, but it's good. I got wet hands, and I just sort of push it off of the dough scraper. It's getting it. It's getting the tensions coming. There's a little bit of a wild beast. We're taming the beast. This is fun, actually. <laughs> I know, I look ridiculous, but it's all right. Oh, boy, that's nice. Yes, you see how taut it is? Hi, Ollie. And that's gorgeous. I think I'm going to... Oh, that's solid, boy. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right there, I think. Oh, that feels great. Right there. One, I want it more round. <laughs> ah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. I'm gonna cover it. to enjoy this nice salad that you saw me just make. Um, I want to show you this salad because I eat a lot of salads and I'm not really like a lover of salads in a way. Like I, I really don't like a plain sort of lettuce, tomato and cucumber salad. It doesn't really do it for me. So if I'm gonna have a salad and this is going to be my meal, my big meal for the day. So I always have in my fridge, um, because I want to show you how easy it is so that you don't get um, put off or think, oh, it's a drag, you know, you have to make all this food at home. I could just go out and get a salad. Well, it's been raining and cold or snowing and cold all week. So I have not gone out at all because I have a well-stocked fridge. We always talk about, I, um, I roast things on the weekend or I poach chicken or I poach shrimp. I have proteins always in the fridge, but so, this was a prime example of having, uh, com making a composed salad and being ready. So it's hassle-free, stress-free. Because you saw on top, these beautiful little pecans. I made these spiced pecans um, months ago and they store in the fridge beautifully. I always sprinkle them on my salad. I always have um, medium hard boiled eggs, not, not runny, not hard, medium, uh, eggs. I like to have the little center be a little soft still. Always have a fridge full of at least six eggs. I just recently made um, a couple days ago this beautiful um, cured sort of spiced red cabbage to put on tacos or salads or on a side dish. Really lovely, crunchy, healthy, and easy to make. So I have that stored in a jar. I have my, my poached chicken. The other day we made um, the Peruvian chicken soup. 
no, uh, later, I, I yesterday, a few days ago, I made a really nice chicken soup. So making the chicken um, stock, I, I poached the chicken in it. So I have some chicken always in the fridge. Lovely. Anyway, and you see lettuce, tomato, fine, but it's got to have all these other things accompanying it. So it's really crunchy, protein packed, got the avocado on there, lots of colorful veggies. So it looks like you want to eat it. Let's just dive into this thing. So keep your fridge packed full of, on a weekly basis, elements that you can put on your composed salad so that you eat more salads and they're they're really good for you but they're they're really ha saving money handy another thing i had in there actually i should have taken out i might have eaten them all i had my roasted sweet potatoes and roasted beets i think i ate them all that's another staple item i like to keep in the fridge for salads because that's so good with goat cheese anyway manja i've got uh, a few more minutes on the um, the dough we're making is just settling down. Um, we worked with all those glutens and then it needs about 35 minutes. It's setting down and it's covered. So we're going to enjoy our salad until it's ready to do the shaping, the final shaping of that dough. I'm so glad you're here with me today. It was really fun. <laughs> While I enjoy this salad, I like to, it's a new recipe especially. I read, I read, I read the recipe like three or four times. And this recipe is one, two, three, four pages long. So there's a lot to read, there's a lot to learn. He educates, you, you, you heard me, I learned a lot already about DDT and uh, something about friction, friction, um, Le bon. uh, I This has been really a great day of learning. Um, anyway, I'm towards the end, as you see, we're towards the end of shaping this dough. But in here, he's got all these nice little extra notes. Uh, extra note about stretch and folds, troubleshooting and how to tinker with your dough because it's all about learning to get to know the dough, course correct with your dough. You can't just follow a recipe, especially with bread. You've gotta know if it's, if it's um, not quite fermented enough, leave it a little longer so it gets a little more bubbly. Here's, a, here's what I found really interesting in Crew Little Star. Increased fermentation flavors with overnight fermentation, which that is what I do with the sourdough bread. So I like the timing of it to go overnight so I can bake it in the morning, but I also like the extra sourness. So this also, you have the option. I am so curious and, and want to taste this bread tonight that I'm gonna do um, a warm so final proofing out in the kitchen and I'm gonna bake it tonight because I just can't wait. And if I had more, if I had more flour, I was going to make two and uh, proof one overnight in the fridge to get this extra soury flavor. It, it describes it to increase the sour flavor of the bread. Proof the dough overnight in the refrigerator, just like we would do with our sour, regular sourdough. Bake it in the morning or early afternoon. So that also gives you that leeway of timing. If you can't, if you just can't do it tonight, you've got to go somewhere just throw it in the fridge, do it tomorrow. I love that. So he's got, it's nice, this book is wonderful. Maurizio Leo, The Perfect Loaf. Wonderful, wonderful uh, bread teaching. And he does it in such an easy way. I really enjoy, I'm really enjoying this. Maple syrup variations. You could put different um, variations in there. Anyway, lots to read while we finish our salad and wait, wait for the next step on the dough. shaping and it's been sitting for actually 40 minutes while I had that salad and we chatted. Um, God, that salad was good. I ate the whole thing too. I, you know, I may not be good at all that many things. I'm a really good eater. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, now, this is similar to what we always shape our sourdough boule, but we're doing it in a Pullman pan, the rectangle, and I've lightly greased it with a little olive oil. You could use butter. And now I will put a little flour, I'm staying with the spelt, on top. 
and a little flour on our surface where we're going to actually shape the dough. But the flour you see is not going inside the dough, it's staying on the outside to give it a nice little crust. But we've already fermented all the grain in there. We don't want to add raw, fresh flour now. So this also could be a little tedious, but we're going to persevere together. And I may bring you in a little closer now. Is what I'm going to do is, instead of my regular routine, you, you've seen me shape it, I'm going to shape it for a rectangle, which I've actually, uh, well, I've done it a couple times, but it's been a while. So I'm going to bring you in a little closer, and here we go. And in the book, it says you can slightly degas it. Oh, this is a little bit, it's gonna be tricky. <laughs> I keep, my, keep the flour on my hands. Because we're not making a sourdough, we're making a nice sandwich bread, so we don't need all those gassy holes in it. We wanna have it, um, okay. It also says to line up the dough with your pan because you're going to try to fit the rolled re rectangle in there. So here we go. I'm just going to fold the sides in. We'll fold it this way. I think we fold it this way. <laughs> I don't know. I think we fold in. We fold in. And this is where I get a little confused if I'm rolling this way or this way. Hmm. Good, good question. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll it this way. <laughs> I'm actually gonna bring these edges in a little bit too, so they roll in. Oh yeah, and it says it's gonna be loose and a little hard, so you you can use this. Kind of like you know what it reminds me of those sticky buns. Tuck and roll. The tuck and roll. I know this is not exactly what he said to do. I'm, I'm, I'm now in uncharted territory and I am winging it. It's really loose and it's a wild one. <laughs> really loose and wild. It's all right. It's fine. And I know it's going to be fine. in now. I'm ready. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. If they said do not push it down in, which I do have a tendency. Okay, that's how it looks. Pretty good. And now we let it sit. I will be putting some oatmeal on top, uh, but no, I think I still have to proof it right now like this. stage. Um, I can't wait to taste this bread. So I have had the bread in the oven for an hour to two hours uh, with it in a big bag, you see, because you don't want it to stick. You know, usually I use that shower cap and it would have stuck to it. So let me take this out and show you what's, what's happening. It looks beautiful. Oh, and I'm so happy. I just have, I save all kinds of things. You know, I'm a pack rat a little bit. I'm like from the depression era. I have this big bag from something, but it needed a big bag that was a Ziploc so that, anyway, I found that and I'm using it. Can you see? It said, let the loaf raise all the way to the top of the pan, and it has, and it's been an hour and 40 minutes. That's how long it took. It, it was, and I did put the um, oatmeal on top, so what I'm going to do is, because it's nice and warm in here in the bag, I'm going to put it back in there because... We have to preheat the oven now, and it's going to take a few minutes. And um, I've been doing my reading. A lot of times you have to preheat um, the pan that it's going to cook in, or the Dutch oven, or if you're steaming, creating steam, which we are. This recipe calls for steam in the oven. 
and it called for lava rocks, which, you know, here in Maine, I, I don't have any lava rocks, but Maggie, my daughter, our daughter, collects all kinds of rocks. Every time she goes to the beach, she gets beautiful granite. There's granite here, there's quartz here. I don't know what that is, I'm not slate. Anyway, I have a beautiful collection of Maine lava rocks. <laughs> so they're, they're going to, I'm gonna put this in the oven well, to preheat it to 425, and that way all the heat is gonna be more surface area for heat. And then when I put the loaf in, I'm going to put some ice cubes in here to create steam. The problem is my oven is so small. Look at, I hope you can see this. You're supposed to have the lava rocks to create the steam un underneath the, um, the bread, but I don't have enough room here to do that because the rack goes in the bottom third of the oven, which I can do, but I cannot fit my, I don't think I know, it's not gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my lava rocks on the same, on the same level as my bread, and you, know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I, I'm sure maybe it's better that the steam comes up from below it, but, it is what it is. Okay, anyway, here we go. Lava rocks in. And you don't put any ice in there yet. Not till it's really hot, because when the ice hits the hot rocks, psh, steam. Uh, cancel that. Okay, oven temp is at 425. I got my ice ready. I got my Gumby gloves ready. And our beautiful maple spelt loaf ready to go. And you know what I was thinking? Because it does require the steam. And we always do this with our sourdough. Didn't say it in the book to do it. I'm, you know, I'm going rogue on this one. I feel confident. I'm gonna put a little bit of, I'm gonna put a little bit of water around the pan and even on the top of the loaf just to create even more steam and nice crust. I don't wanna, I don't wanna push down too hard. Just enough. All right, my safety gloves on. Tim, Tim and Celia call these my Gumby gloves. <laughs> Hi, Tim and Celia, I miss you guys. I can't wait to get back to Florida and go shelling. Okay, enough of that. All right, in we go. Here we go. This goes in. I'm gonna put my ice right on the lava rocks. I didn't see a big dramatic psh with steam, but I'm gonna assume that, I'm gonna put the light on. Oh, I hear it steaming. Okay, so timer, timer, 15 minutes. Carried away there. Okay, so 15 minutes of steam. Then we need to vent the oven of the steam. Take the rack with the lava rocks out and get and the 15 minutes is only necessary at the beginning for the steam to help with the oven spring and the rise. So then you want to get it out because it maybe it goes too is too much. And then when we take the rocks out to vent it of the steam in 15 minutes, you also turn the temperature down in the oven to 375, I believe it says. But you know, all, again, all of this will be in the in the description below. And we are on coming to the end of our marathon with this bread. I can't wait to taste it. Just to recap, we did 425 for 15 minutes with the steam tray that we created. We then, after 15 minutes, we took the steam tray out, put the temperature down to 375, and we're gonna cook it for another 30 minutes or until the internal temperature is at 205 minutes. Oh, there's a nice steam in there. Beautiful steam. Okay, the lava, main lava work, rock worked well. Still good, good, good. I'm just gonna move this into the center of the oven. Oh, it looks so good. I'll show you in a second. I'm gonna turn it down to 375 for um, 30 minutes, it says. The, the steam did the trick. It's nice, it's got a nice rise on it. Yeah, I'm gonna use those rocks again. It's a good trick. Um, I, it smells really good in here. 
you can really smell, maybe it's the maple is spelt, it's stronger. The, um, the whole kitchen smells really wonderful. Um, so 30 minutes more, we'll take it out. It was about two minutes left to go, so 28 minutes at 375, and I decided to check it because it was browned and chestnut color on top and starting to crack. And so let's give it a temperature and see if it's at 205, which I'm pretty sure it is. It feels hollow. Or, I don't, you know the sound when it's not mushy inside. 198, 199, 201, 202, yeah, we're good. So now it's gonna cool in the pan um, just until I can handle it and then I'll, I'll flip it out and let it cool on the rack for uh, about two hours before we cut into it. And isn't that, that's always the hardest part, I know, but you know what, I'm feeling like 208, a little over, little, I could have taken it out a couple minutes earlier, but that's fine. Um, I'm really happy. I know it's gonna taste good, but that'll be the final test. I like the whole process. I like, I, I know I like using spelt and maple, so this has really been a good, um, this could be a new thing for me, for my egg sandwich, my tuna salad. I mean, just think about this nice sweet bread. Um, I don't think it's overly sweet either, um, but not like anadama. It's a sourdough with the spelt. Uh, just a little maple, but um, I think there's going to be a lot of nice sandwich uses for it. I'm really excited. It be fun to get new bread recipes in the repertoire. You know, it's like you get comfortable with your regular ones, and then you feel like, okay, I can I can try another one and work on that for a while. Then you put that into the rotation, so that you're not it's not overwhelming. You're just learning a little at a time, so you really know it, and then you move on and, and you add another bread or. Yeah. I love cooking. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. I am so happy. The structure, the sponginess, the, the, the crumb, it is perfect. Did you see how it's crunchy, but it's so soft? And the taste is amazing. Listen to the crunch. Mmm. Mmm. This bread is special. It, it has a sweetness to it from the maple syrup, but not overly sweet. It harkens to anadama, but back to sourdough. You know what? This may be my new perfect bread. I just love it. Mmm. It is so tasty. Okay, I'm going to put the link to the recipe. You'll love the book, too, if you decide to get it. Um, this is well worth doing. Well worth making. Oh, man, I love this. Thank you for stopping by the main farmhouse kitchen today. Subscribe and keep watching.